Ladies and gentlemen, I am the C-H-A-L-L, -L, and welcome to the first ever DRFC 2022-23 season transfer done deal. We've done our first done deal early. It's an early transfer, not really known in the Doncaster Accords, but we have done a done, we've done a done deal. We've done a done deal. And it's a very early deal as well. It's one that's been in the room mill for a good couple of weeks now, a good few weeks. It is, of course, Harrison Biggins from Fleetwood Town. Now, before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, cut that case post on your YouTube video. And for now, let's have a look at the club's official statement. Rovers are delighted to announce the signing of midfielder Harrison Biggins on a two-year deal. Sheffield-born Biggins joins the club after leaving Skybet League one side Fleetwood Town in the summer, following five years with the Cod Army. The energetic midfielder becomes Gary McSheffrey's first signing of the summer transfer window, with the deal effective from July the first so still a good couple of months away well about a month or so away the 26 year old started his career across south yorkshire with bansley before moving into nonley with stocksbridge park steels he improved year on year with the steels with his reputation enhancing he signed for fleetwood down in 2017 he has now made more, more than 120 career appearances Biggins played a key role in helping Fleetwood survive in the third tier last season, chipping in with five goals along the way. He arrives to complement a midfield already boasting the quality of Tommy Rowe, Adam Clayton and Ben Klaus. Um, now, let's have a look at the players' thoughts on the move to Doncaster. Harrison, welcome to Doncaster Rovers. How does it feel to have joined the club? Thank you very much. No, it's, a, it's a great feeling to have, to have got it all signed and sorted. Um, I'm just looking forward to coming in now in the summer and um, getting cracking. You're the club's first signing of the summer transfer window. How's this one come about from your perspective? Um, I've known about it for a few for a while now, to be fair. Um, but as soon as the season finished, it sort of it sort of um, got going from there. Really, I spoke to the gaffer, um, spoke to cops, and um, everything's gone really smoothly. And finally, it's done. What's up? So there, straight away, the first bit. Um, obviously, he's, you know, grateful of how smoothly the negotiations have gone. Obviously, you know, it's just words, but um, fingers crossed that's a good sign that the football side of things is starting to change. Obviously, we don't, we're not usually known for getting business done early, so it's nice to sort of be amongst that group that's now starting to get business done early. Uh, and it gives us better prep going into pre-season as well. What sort of things were said in, in those meetings to persuade you that this was the place for you? Well, I think, obviously, it speaks for itself when you come, you turn up at the ground to meet people and you see the ground. Um, and obviously, their intentions this season... Um, is to go back up, get 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 this club back into League One, um, and that was my aim. I want to be successful, um, and I think this is a perfect place to come and to come and get them, um, you know, get get trophies and what have you. What he said there about the intentions of going up, um, you know, obviously it's great to hear from him that the intentions of the club are to go up. I know personally, um, you know, fact. You know, Rovers fans know that, you know, I, I speak to people at the club and, um, you know, I, I know, I, I can I can quote that that is what the intentions are. Well, that's what they've told me anyway. Uh, that's what Harrison said, that's what I've been told, that's what the people have been told. The intentions are to go up next season, to go up to League One as quick as possible. Whether that's achieved or not is obviously... You know, anyone's guess. You know, anyone could say we can get promoted, or we, or, or the in, intentions or aims this season is to get promoted. Um, but to actually achieve it is putting your words into action, and um, you know, obviously, we'll see to be believed. But um, you know, I think all the signs from this deal so far are sort of really positive. You know, we've got uh, business done early, or our first piece of business done early. Um, and we are, you know, hopefully making the right steps in the football structure that's going to get us promoted to League One. So, um, you know, I, I, I can't have any negatives about this at all. And him wanting to win trophies and stuff like that, you know, that's obviously a good thing to hear as well. Because, what, when was our last trophy? The the twenty the 2012 13 League One title um, on that famous day in Griffin Park uh, when we won 
uh, in the last minute and the last seconds of the game and Bournemouth drew so uh, we end up being champions under Brian Flynn that was our last trophy I believe which is you know a weird one but uh, but there we go but no it's good to see that Harrison wants to win trophies as well because we've had a very long uh, trophy not very 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 long but we've had a lot very long trophy drought you worked with Steve Ayer before, who's now the club's assistant manager. Did that help to sort of get a grasp for what the club was all about? Yeah, I had um, I had Steve messaging me as well, to be fair, um, towards the end of the season, uh, just to see how I was and stuff. And I thought, sort of know where this is going. But um, no, it's nice to work with Steve as well. Um, obviously, like you say, I've worked with him before, and he's a great coach. So I'm looking forward to joining back up with him. It's great to hear that he rates highly as Steve Ayer. And to be fair, I do rate Steve Ayer as a coach. You know, other people rate Steve Ayer as a coach. He's got the experience. He's worked with the likes of Ben Mee, Daniel Sturridge, Kieran Trippier, back at the Man City Youth Academy. You know, he's got tons of experience. It's great having that experience next to Gary McSheffrey, who's a very young, up-and-coming manager. So um, it is great having that experience. It's great to see Steve Ayer get the assistant's job again. Your contract had come to an end at Fleetwood. Did you feel that this was the right time for a new challenge? Yeah, I think so. I've been there a while now. Um, and I, like you say, I think a change is always nice. Um, and for it to be to, to come to a place like this after um, and get it done so soon, it's just, it's just exciting, exciting times. There's a couple of boys at Fleetwood, Danny Andrew and, and Brad Halliday, who have been here before. Did you tap into their knowledge of, of the football club before? Deciding? This should be interesting. Yeah, once I heard about, about the interest, um, obviously I spoke to Dan and spoke to Brad. Um, and they both, you know, they, they both speak so highly of the club, the people around it, um, and every obviously the gaffer, the coaching staff. So um, it sort of, it sort of made made me want to get sorted pretty quick. To be fair. Interesting. So talking to Danny Andrew and Brad Halliday, getting that sort of knowledge about the club and the the surroundings and everything. Obviously, it's interesting that statement, you know, and. Um, you know how much they rate the club and stuff like that so you know we'll um we'll see how this goes we'll see how the rest of this sort of develops and uh fingers crossed uh he was right and fingers crossed harrison biggins will be uh here for many years to come you're a sheffield lad as well you've been playing your trade a couple of hours away from home for the last five six years or so how big a factor was that in, in moving closer to, to your family and your roots as well that was a big thing for me this summer and um, having lived away for so long on my own um, moving back home was was a big thing um, but where that would be I, I wasn't to know until obviously the interest came in and that's what made me want to get it sorted um, that's it far enough it's out any better to be honest uh, I'm just so happy it's sorted how does that how much does that help as a, a footballer when you're feeling settled off the pitch can that help improve your performances even more on it as well definitely yeah I mean there's times when obviously I've been living away these last few years when things aren't going right um, and you're so far away from home it, it, you, it takes a lot longer to get over it um, whereas now I'm close to home I'm close to family um, so there's always someone there to go and you know speak to or whatever if, if that if that was needed you come up against Rovers a fair few times over the past few years. How much are you looking forward to calling the Eco Power Stadium home from this summer onwards? Yeah, that's another big thing. Um, coming as a visiting player, I've come a few times now, and it's somewhere you always really look forward to playing. Um, so coming coming here, you know, every other week now, calling it your own stadium is perfect. Um, always a really nice pitch. Oh, well, it has been every time I've come anyway. So no, it's uh, it's exciting. And how would you describe yourself as a player? We know you're a, a midfielder, but what can the fans expect to see from you on the pitch next season and beyond? Um, I'm, I'm energetic, box to box. Um, last last year, I got started getting past the striker and started adding goals to my game, and that's something that this year I really want to build on. Um, getting forward and getting into a box, um, and I think my work definitely speaks for itself. Really, you'll you'll see that that will never drop. Um, now he spoke to a gaffer and what have you. Um, that's what you know. If a full team do that, then you can be you can be successful. See, from this point of view, from what he said there about the kind of midfielder he is, energetic, box to box, work ethic, has an eye for goal. 
says to me that he's the Matt Smith replacement. I think he's the permanent Matt Smith replacement, which, to be honest, makes this deal even better because at least we're not replacing a loan with another loan. We're replacing a loan with a two-year deal here. So it's nice to... Ha it, obviously, we'll, we'll see what happens this season in the, next tw in the next 12 to 24 months, whether he is a better player than Matt Smith or not, because obviously it's going to be hard to be better than Matt Smith was this season because uh, Matt Smith was one of our top loanees, or probably the top loanee. Uh, I think if Josh Martin had a full season, I think he'd have been the top loanee this season. But um, but no, Ethan Galbraith had a decent loan spell. Obviously, Odebeko had his moments. Chakur was poor. Dahlberg had his moments. Um, you know, Matt Smith, for me, was probably the best consistent loanee we've had this horrible season. So I think it's going to be hard for a permanent player to replace that kind of loan player. Uh, but we'll see what he does over the next 24 plus months. Uh, like I said, hopefully, fingers crossed, Harrison can up his game from what Matt Smith did this season as the sort of box to box midfielder and the energetic one, the work ethic one. Because one thing about Matt Smith that sort of impressed me more than anything with it being a low knee is his work rate every game. And I think that's what impressed everybody. Uh, his work rate pretty much every game this season has been non stop, 100%. Uh, and he'll always give 100% work rate on the pitch. And his work ethic was brilliant. Uh, and his energy. Energy as well was you know 100% of the time for most of this season so um, you know it's gonna be hard to replace that but uh, from the sounds of it it sounds like this is the replacement to Matt Smith. There's a fair bit of quality in that midfield as well you only have to look at the likes of Adam Clayton, Tommy Rowe, Ben Close coming back from injury now as well how excited are you? By Didn't mention John Bostock. Them, Didn't mention Bostock. Well. Oh definitely yeah I've, I've played against him um, before and I, I know I know the qualities I know how good they are um, so to play with them now um, like, like I say it's, it's exciting um, you see the careers that they've had in the past and the clubs that they've been at speaks for themselves really and finally what's your message to the Rovers fans then about your excitement for, for the new campaign I'm looking forward to, to getting to the uh, getting the season started and seeing you all at the ground um, getting behind us and hopefully it's a successful season I hope so as well. Um, funny how they mentioned the midfielders. They spoke Clayton, Klaus coming back in pre-season, Tommy Rowe. They didn't mention John Bostock's name, which, you know, I'm not going to look too much into that because obviously we don't know what the fresh term is going to be yet. But um, just something that I picked up on. Uh, but that is Harrison Biggins' interview about the signing uh, this season. Now let's have a look at Gary McSheffrey's thoughts. So that was the players' thoughts going into the move to Doncaster. Obviously, uh, it's a very energetic box-to-box -box midfielder with a massive work ethic. So it sounds to me, uh, like I just said earlier, uh, while reacting to the clip, sounds to me like the replacement for Matt Smith, who, of course, is going back to Arsenal or has gone back to Arsenal from his loan spell at Rovers, along with the rest of the loanies that have gone back. So it seems to me like he is the permanent... It seems to me we're starting early and we're sort of... I think... I could be guessing here. People from the club might watch this and sort of think, nah, that's not our thought process at all. But my theory is, I think we're sort of replacing the permanent, uh, replacing the low knees first before looking at other positions. Uh, but I could be wrong here. We could be doing both along the way, just at different times, but uh, you never, never know. Uh, but we've spoken about the players' thoughts. I think it's the replacement for Matt Smith. Uh, sounds like he's excited about coming to the club. Now let's hear from the manager, Gary McSheffrey. Gary, you've secured your first signing of the summer. Harrison Biggins joins Rovers on a, a two-year deal. What is it about him that made you want to bring him to the football club? First time I really caught eyes on him live was obviously the game in January at the stadium here. Um, and within the first two or three minutes, I think he made three or four runs in behind our defence. That is true. Got that is true. The pitch got... You know, just got good territory, and that was on the back of probably a bit of a cluster of goals as well. Five goals in, in four, five or six games. Over. I wouldn't call five or six goals a cluster of goals. I think I'd call it a few goals, not really a cluster. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm just clutching at straws here. But yeah, yeah. I, I get why he's, I get why he said a cluster of goals because you know a few goals, etc. But Christmas period, and ever since then, really, we've kept our eye on him. Um, he brings high energy, good legs in midfield. He can he can run all day. He can run really beyond. And I think he arrives he arrives on time as well from cutbacks, 
crosses and his, his, finishing, his finishing ability is really good, he's composed and he can score a variety of goals, so I think he adds goals to our midfield. I mean, that's got to be a good thing. It's got, I mean, we need goals more than anything. Obviously, we need a striker in this window, in my opinion, as well. But, you know, at least we've got people in other positions that can score. Obviously, our left-backs have scored more than our strikers this season, which is embarrassing enough. But um, at least we'll have goals in different places on the pitch. And like, like I said about the player coming in and his and the player's own thoughts, you know, he's, uh, and he's, what the fans can expect, he's very much the Matt Smith replacement for me. Yeah, the fact that you've got quality in there already, but is he a different type of player to the, the players you've already got in, in that sort of position? Yeah, he is. Um, he's, he's still got quality on the ball. Um, he can play anywhere in the midfield, really. Um, he can sit if you want someone to sit, but like I say, he can run him beyond. He can, he can join in and he can arrive on, on time, a bit like Tommy Rowan, you know, but being an effort. So I think I think we've got the options and ability to play Tommy Rowe higher up and if he then to a room his field, then I do feel we, we had goals in that department. At least we've got another Tom Rowe on the pitch. <laughs> With Matt Smith going back to Arsenal, he was the, the legs, wasn't he? The energy in that in that midfield last season. But is Harrison? Do you feel sort of somebody who can add that, add the legs into midfield as well? I think I think Matt Smith had a great season for us. Um, I constantly challenged him to get his numbers up in terms of goals, assists, and product. But you know, he's he's, he's pressing, he's, he's covering everybody in the grass. His runs in behind, they were good. And I feel that Harrison probably adds that end product now onto that type of play, uh, similar players. Um, but I think Harrison's got a knife for goal and more composure in, in the final third when it comes to putting the ball in the net. You spoke about getting the right characters in, not just the, the right players. What was it in those meetings that you had with him that impressed you the most about his character? Really down to earth. Um, Sounded down to earth on his interview. Um, I feel that. I feel that he'll bring. The non-negotiables, the the things that uh, Yorkshire fans, you know, demand the the, the non-negotiables, if you like, the work ethic, the heart on your sleeve, and I feel it will really, you know, I think the, the fans will really, you know, like what they see from him. Uh, that's the one thing I said about the squad next season. We need heart on your sleeve players. We don't want players just. Going through the motions, going through a waste check, because that's Man United's job. <laughs> um, like I say, you won't stop running. It'll give everything. It's them. It's them characteristics we want. We want to be. We want the the fans to engage with the players that we bring in, and we look at Harrison as one that they can really relate to. That's hopefully yeah, what we want to do. Well. You've mentioned his qualities there, but still improvement left in him as well, and a fair bit of it at that. Yeah, uh, we got a player last year that. Again, he, he led he led a lot of the time in a, in a struggling Fleetwood team, but got five or six goals in, in League One. So we feel that we're bringing a League One midfielder into League Two. And, and that's true. That's technically true. In our squad. To get him so early as well, not to have to go through the, is he going to sign for us? Is he going to sign for somebody <laughs> else? The fact he signed so early shows how keen he is to to play for Doncaster Rovers. Um, I tell you what, you know, that's one thing I was glad about the fact that it's another chance for. I know it's a, I know it's technically a free deal because obviously his contract expires at Fleetwood on Ju on July on July first. But you know, it's good to get that early deal through the line because obviously we don't want to go through the whole deadline day of you know not getting the player, not releasing the funds too early, and you know having to scoop around for replacements, don't get a replacement, and then sign someone from the free agency a couple of days after deadline day. We don't want to go through all that again. That was a big one. That was a big one. Um, once he, once he was aware of our interest, you know, I, I know his, I know his agent, former player, and once he was aware of our interest, he really wanted to speak to us first, see what we had to offer. That's going to be a good thing. Get a feel for us, and that it was, yeah, he, he's delighted to get it through, and that's that's massive. It's massive to actually want someone that wants to come here, and we're his first choice, even even on relegation. So. Well, that's good. good. Players and, and you know they're weighing up their options, but Harrison wanted to come here, you know, and, and he had good options. He had good options, good league, good league two options, solid offers. Uh, he would have, he would have about. He probably had a couple of good league one options as well, but like. To me, it sounds in terms of good league two options. What would you consider a good league two option? I mean, would you consider the likes of? I know Northampton was in the playoffs. So there was still a chance of league one football for them at the time, but. You know, obviously they're in they're in League Two next season. Obviously with the playoff defeat, but would Northampton count as a good option? I I, I don't know. Journalists 
message me and ask me what you think is a, is a solid League 2 option or a couple of good League 1 options if you stuck around. Like, you say, you like a Morecambe, maybe. And we to get done if it was a solid League 1 option, a Morecambe, maybe. Knows the South Yorkshire patch, if you like. How much did that have a, a sway in things? Well, was he keen to sort of get closer to home and, and South Yorkshire to through and through? Closer to his family? Yeah, obviously, he'd have had his own personal reasons to do things as well. But like I say, for us, it was about getting someone with the, you know, the, the, the right core values that South Yorkshire fans want, really. And I think he ticks every box, and then he's the type of player that we've been missing in that midfield. Yeah, more than 120 career appearances, I think it is. He had a little loan spell at Barrow early on in his career, but Fleetwood's been his home for the last five years or so. You, you don't always get that experience, do you? From, especially from a player who's It's good to get experience the through the door. Yeah, and he's also had that, that grounding and that, and that hunger of playing at Stocksbridge as well for a couple of years before that. So he, he, he's, got that, he's got the hunger and he, he knows what it's like to dip out of it and play in league football and graft. So, you know, he appreciates... He appreciates That's got to be something. Got to be worth something. The size of club he's come to. He's excited and we're excited and we hope that he brings good things to us. Does it potentially make it easier with other signings as well? The fact that they've seen you've, you've got one through the door and they want to be a part of it as well? Could do that. Or just things like that always have a lot on effect. So when they see you bringing in quality, not just quantity, as we've said before, you, you um, it, it can have that effect. But, you know, it's important that we, we don't rush into too many things and we make sure that they're the right ones again. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I mean, when you say don't rush in, obviously you still got to, you know, keep up the pace with the transfer business because it's a very movable business. But um, I can see why they're sort of taking it carefully, but take it carefully with a bit more speed. That's that'd be my advice anyway. But uh, that is Gary McSheffrey's thoughts. Now let's go into my final thoughts on the signing. So that is the manager's thoughts. Now, Gary McSheffrey does, seems to speak quite highly of this guy. Um, researched into the player. Uh, seems like they've done the homework, him and Cops and the whole recruitment team. Even though there's no recruitment head yet, because Graham Young's replacement hasn't turned up yet or not been announced yet. But um, but yeah, it seems like they're sort of starting to get their groove now with the with the with the business. So uh, fingers crossed, more transfers to come. But that's gonna be it for this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want my final summarising thoughts, I think Harrison's a great signing. Um, like I said, I think they didn't mention Bostock with the other midfielders, but I think that's just, maybe that's just because they've not agreed fresh terms yet, or maybe that maybe they've not decided on the new deal yet on a potential new deal yet who knows but um that could be why they've kept bostock's name out of the conversation with the midfielders they've got like clayton close and, and Rowe. uh it could just be uh, a speech mistake like i said don't i wouldn't look too much into not including bostock in that list but um but yeah overall i think biggins a good uh, addition to the midfield and fingers crossed you know being a south yorkshire lad knows what the club means to the fans and to the community um, you know, fingers crossed we've got a, a good player on our hands. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more content. The season review is just around the corner uh, from this past season, so stay tuned for that. Obviously, in terms of the NBA content, we've got loads of uh, playoff reviews coming, so stay tuned for that. So obviously, I haven't, yet, I haven't yet to do a video on the Game 1 reviews. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait sort of towards the end of the playoffs and then do like a review of all the finals together and sort of their progression towards the uh, through all the finals so if you do like that content stay tuned for that and for now i'm the chal that is full time